Hello, evil minions. It is I, your mean and evil overlord. Hello, it is Friday, April 24th, and today I am bringing to you part three of our five-part series on the causes of the Spanish-American War. We have previously done Cuban Revolution, we have done Yellow Journalism, and today we're going to do uh, part three, which is the DeLome letter. We're probably also going to do part four later today, and I'll get both of these published today. But I wanted to go and, and get part three, which is the DeLome letter. So let's hop right into it, shall we? So the DeLome letter, what is that? Well, the DeLome letter was a letter written by this man here. You see him, Enrique DeLome. He was the Spanish ambassador to the United States in the late 1900s, specifically in 19, or 1898, which is what the, the, roughly where we are at, at this point. Um, although this was, um, yeah, this was in, in 98. Um, he was the, like I said, the ambassador to the, um, and I'm going to cut out here. Uh, he was the ambassador to the United States from Spain. He, he handled, as an ambassador, he handled uh, diplomatic communications between the United States and Spain. If, if the government of the United States had a question about, you know, for Spain or had an issue with Spain, very often the first point of contact is the ambassador. Um, the ambassador is a diplomat. He represents his, his country. So if the, if the U.S. government had a question, they could go to an ambassador and say, hey, what's up with this? Or what do you think about this? Or we're thinking about a new treaty or a new trade agreement. We, uh, here's the details. You take it back to your government and talk to your government about that. And very often the, the uh, ambassador to a country is, is authorized to um, communicate officially for the, the country that they are from. So this was Enrique de Lome. He was the ambassador from Spain to the United States. So he handled some diplomatic relationships between the two countries. And the letter that he wrote was a letter uh, back to his country, to his foreign minister. Um, and I'm not going to pronounce his name, but you can see it right here. The Señor... Uh, Canaleus or something along that line. I know, I know I'm, I'm wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, but he wrote a letter to this uh, foreign minister. And in it, he started talking about the state of politics in the United States. Um, he said, look, dude, here's the situation with politics here in the United States. And he talked about a number of things. He talked about the way Spain was being portrayed in the newspapers. Uh, you remember at this point, the newspapers are going crazy over this uh, Cuban revolution. They are um, really going into, you know, a lot of details about how horrible Spain is. And, and DeLome was writing back to his government saying, here are the things that we are hearing or that we're seeing here in the United States. Part of that was an evaluation of then President William McKinley, President of the United States McKinley. We actually saw him get elected president um, in our video series when we were talking about the men who built America. It was McKinley that uh, J.P. Morgan and John Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie got together and put their money behind to get him into the uh, White House and he, they were successful. That, that was the same guy, William McKinley. So um, let's go into um, a little more detail about who he was. Uh, this uh, frame, this uh, slide here, uh, DeLome was the Spanish ambassador to Washington, D.C. He writes this letter in it. He criticized, and I put criticized here in quotations because we're going to look at that here in a minute and you can decide president william mckinley and be, because of his comments and we'll see again see that in a moment anti-spanish feelings spread throughout the united states and you can see in this slide this is a political cartoon of the time this was run in one of the newspapers i'm going to assume it was the new york journal but it could be uh the new york world it could could have been any paper at the time really and, but I'm guessing it's the journal because they were the first to lead with this uh, DeLome letter story. And in it, 
this cartoon depicts Enrique Delome. You can see him here in what is a very stereotyped portrayal of what a Spaniard was believed to look like like and it is not necessarily flattering if we go back we can see him here uh you know the public officials back then were very fond of their medals and their uniform and all that kind of stuff but this is a very different picture here than what you see here um and what you see is a united states battleship firing and and blowing enrique um out of Cuba, or the Spaniards out of Cuba, back into Spain. So it was a very, um, uh, not a very flattering uh, look at uh, Spaniards in general, and specifically kind of an attack on DeLome in particular. Why was everybody upset about this? Why was the Journal and other newspapers making such a big deal about this? Let's look at what he actually wrote. All right. And, you know, we're not going to do the whole letter here, but we'll, we'll take some of the, the comments that, that were cited as being the, the biggest problem. And he wrote, Besides the natural and inevitable coarseness with which McKinley repeats all that the press and public opinion of Spain has said of Weiler, it shows once more what McKinley is, a weak, catering to the rabble, low politician who desires to stand well with the jingos of his party. All right. And you can see, you know, there's there's these ellipses here, which indicates they have taken out extra words that don't really add to the meaning. Um, but let's break this down uh, very briefly, uh, but quickly. Um so that you can understand exactly what it means. It says, so let's read it again. Besides the natural and inevitable coarseness with which McKinley repeats all that the press and public opinion of Spain has said of Weiler. Um, basically what they're saying is that, you know, McKinley reads all this stuff in the newspapers about what's being said of Spain and he just repeats it all and, and, and blah, 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 blah back to the American people. So um, he's doing that, and it shows, because he's doing that, it shows what McKinley is. He's weak. He's catering to the rabble. He's, and what that means is basically he is following what the press is saying about Spain, even if he knows differently, even if he knows what we're actually doing in Cuba versus what the newspapers are reporting, he's not going to come out and say, oh, no, that's not true, newspapers. That's not true, American people. Here's what's really happening. He's not going to do that. He's catering to the American people. If they And they, you know, these newspapers are pushing this idea that, you know, Spain is terrible and, and awful and the people are believing that. And so McKinley's just going to go along with that regardless. And because of that, he's just a low politician. He just is weak. He's, you know, he's going to listen to the people instead of the truth. And, 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 and I say that knowing that the truth depends on, on really what perspective you're looking at. Because as we know, the, the Spaniards were fairly brutal. Weiler was a, more, a butcher more than anything else. <clears throat> we have pictures to prove it. Uh, of some of the things that were going on in Spain or in Cuba. And so, but he, he basically said, uh, who desires to stand well with the jingos of his party. Now, what a jingo refers to is, is a term called jingoism. And I'll, I'll read you the definition of jingoism. Uh, jingoism is extreme patriotism, especially in the form of aggressive or warlike foreign policy. So there's patriotism where you're like, hey, I love my country and this is a great country. Woohoo! Don't you want to be, you know, like us? That's patriotism and there's nothing wrong with patriotism. And then there's jingoism um, or nationalism, which we're going to get to in our next lesson, um, which is kind of an extreme form of that. And in the case of jingoism, it's, hey, we're we're America. We're we're our country. This is great. We're the best country in the world. And we're going to come beat you up if we don't like you or if you disagree with us, you know. 
So what DeLome basically said was, look, you've got all these people in America calling for, you know, death to Spain, and McKinley is just going right along with it because he's not going to say no because he's a weak politician. That is the essence of what DeLome said. All right. Now, you can form your own opinion about what that meant or just how big of an insult that was. Um, but here's how the, the journal, the, the New York Journal, um, here's what they had to say about it. All right. They said this is the worst insult to the U.S. in our history was the headline that they, they went with. So my question to you, kiddos, is do you think that's true? Does that sound like the worst insult to the U.S. in our history? You know, keep in mind through all of this, we've gone through a revolution. We've gone through a civil war. We've had dealings. You know, the War of 1812 was, you know, was was an issue. Um, was Was calling McKinley a low politician? Was that necessarily the worst insult to the U.S. in our history? I'll leave it for you to decide. I have my opinion. Um, but that was what the journal certainly said was, um, was an issue. They said this is the worst insult to the U.S. in our history. And that was just more indication that there was a problem. So as a result of this headline, this, this narrative that the journal was playing out, um, the DeLome letter and the yellow journalism that surrounded it, uh, which we just saw, it forced the recall of uh, Ambassador DeLome uh, from the United States. He was, he was called back to Spain, um, and it pushed the U.S. and Spain closer to war. It created, probably more so than anything else at this point, it created a, a lot of um, harsh animosity between the United States and Spain. You know, Spain and the United States had, you know, had been tense because of what was going on in Cuba. But by actively uh, pushing this, exposing this letter, um, and getting the American people all upset about it, it, it really soured the relationships between the U.S. and Spain and, and brought them closer to war. So that is part three of this lesson. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped up. We are going to move into part four um, very quickly, and we'll get that knocked out, both of those knocked out and uploaded today. So I will be back with you soon, kiddos. Peace. If anyone has a hidden immunity idol and would like to play it, now would be the time to do so.